Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Josh Saunders, or here at North Iredale, they call me Coach Saunders. I want to take a little bit of time today to talk to you about how to become a better basketball coach and a better leader in your community. Um, being a basketball coach, you're going to be in control of so many young men or ladies throughout your season and year to year. You're going to meet a lot of people that you're going to have a huge impact on in life. And you want to make sure that you impact those kids in a very positive way. You don't want to leave them with any negativity. You don't want to leave them with any bad uh, communication that could deter them to making the wrong decisions in life. Everything you do is being looked at and studied by each one of those kids. And don't get me wrong, kids act like they have a problem with direction and rules. But in all honesty, and cases show that children, teenagers, athletes, they want to be pushed. They want to be told what to do. They want direction. So if you take your program seriously, if you take your leadership seriously, then your kids should follow you and they will take your program seriously. So the first step into taking your program seriously and becoming a better basketball coach and overall better leader is one, what I like to call is create your program. You need to create your program and this could change from year to year. And I'll use basketball for example because that's my choice of sport that I coach right now and it's my passion. And I let my passion show in my practices and in my talks and in my huddles and just in front of my parents and anywhere I go, I show passion. So you need your passion to lead to a title of your program. And this year, coming into this season, this is my second year with this school. Last year, coming in as the assistant coach, they had some struggles. And they didn't have a very good year. So coming into this year, coming in as the head coach, these kids needed something to build off of. And they needed some momentum. And they needed some direction. So to start the year after we claimed our team, we decided to title our program this year. Our basketball program was one word. And that word was overcome. That word was put up all over the locker room. That word was used in my huddles. That word was used in my practices. And that word meant a lot to some of these kids that were coming back. That meant a lot to some of the seniors coming in. And they took it seriously. And the word overcome became very popular with this program this year because last year they had a lot of adverse adversity. They had parents criticizing certain coaches. They had parents criticizing certain game plans. They had parents criticizing other kids that made the team. And parents can really disrupt a program. And there's not a lot you can do with parents. And you can try your best to have damage control with parents. But if the parents aren't on board with the program, they can tear it down real quick. But I've been part of programs where parents aren't part of the program, but your kids are a solid unit. And if you can get your kids to that unit, you'll have never, ever have problems with parents or the fans or the students of your, your people watching your games and studying you every Tuesday and Friday night as you play. So we had some problems in the locker room with kids and kids bashing because of certain parents starting issues. So I use that example to, to give you a definition of why I chose this year to push the word overcome. So when we felt down, or we felt defeated, or we felt out of it, or we was having a bad practice, we really just had to remind each other. And I've even had the kids come up to me when I felt like I was down a little bit for a couple losses or some maybe some bad mistakes I had. And they asked me, Coach, we're overcoming for you. Are you going to overcome for us? So that told me, when I put something out and I show a passion, 
that they grasped it and they grabbed a hold of it. And that meant something to them. And they didn't have the best year, but you know what? I watched 12 kids come together that we really had no clue if they would mesh. And by the end of the year, they got it. They understood what team meant. They understood what overcome meant. It wasn't about the winning season. It was about becoming a team. It was about taking up for each other. It was about finishing out your senior year with people that you love and playing the game that you love and doing it the way you should be doing it. So we got that across. The message is across. So now my program has something we're building off of. And hopefully in the next year or two, I can change that to something different. But right now, I want all the incoming kids, the current kids, to learn what it feels like to overcome. Because right now, this program is sort of at the bottom of the record stats, you know, trying to get our way up and building a program. So we've got a lot to work off of. But as a coach, you've got a lot to work off of because you need to enhance your mental abilities so that you can enhance your team's mental abilities and physical abilities. So you need to find value. You need to find value in your coaching schemes. You need to find value in your kids. You need to find value in yourself. If you find value in all those things, you're going to find value in your team. And you need to take a serious note and find benefits in your leadership. And value and benefits come together because are you organized? Are you making a schedule for every single practice? If you are organized and making schedules and down to the point on what practices should be and what your daily routine should be and holding your kids accountable and holding contracts accountable and making these kids see that they do have responsibilities outside of those classrooms and making these kids decide if they can make decisions on their own and making these kids decide or feel like they have a sense of responsibility like an adult, you're going to find value and you're going to find benefit in every season that you coach. In every season that you coach, it needs to grow. And people outside of that need to see that you are benefiting from these kids. These kids are benefiting from you. And even with winning or losing seasons, those parents and those fans and your staff and that principal want those kids under your care. That's when you know you're winning. It's not about the win-loss record. It's about what the kids think. It's about what the parents think. It's about what your principal thinks. It's about whoever's above you agree that those kids are in the best hands. That's what I'm trying to create here. And that's what everybody should create at their schools or their teams or their colleges. You have to create a sense of love, a sense of caring, a sense of leadership. To end this, I would say that you never need to stop learning. You're never going to know it all. You're never going to know it all. You need to keep studying the game. You need to keep studying the psychology of the kids. You need to keep studying everything and every aspect of being a leader, a teacher, and a coach. Okay? Don't be their friend. Act like their friend. But push them as you were their parent. Push them as you were their, their boss. You're getting ready to send these kids out into a world they have no clue what they're getting into. Make basketball like a job. Make them held accountable. Make them make decisions. Okay? Include them in decisions. Don't get stuck on winning. That's what I'm trying to advise you here. That's what I'm trying to send the home run to. Don't get stuck on winning. Don't be so caught up in all the losses. Just never stop learning. Always keep teaching yourself because everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got their way. And if you can learn and make those your own ways and use a little bit of this coaches or a little bit of this teacher or somebody out here, that psychologist or whoever, um, all that stuff meshes, meshes into one good plan when it becomes yours. Uh, you need to teach leadership. If you've got good leadership, they'll follow you. Teach good leadership and teach character. Teach character. Because with character and leadership, okay, with character and leadership, your program will be built so much easier. And then the winning comes with attitude. The winning will come after you build the leadership and the character because they're going to want it more. You're going to have to stop pushing because you don't need to. Because once you build the leadership and the character, you find yourself not coaching hustle and effort and attitude. When the leadership and character get to where it needs to be, 
Then all of a sudden, the winning comes. Then all of a sudden, the losing goes away. And then all of a sudden, the school's having fun. And then the kids are truly having fun. And then all them years of building and building, like I'm doing right now, it's going to come full circle and feel awesome. But one thing I've always said to myself, this last little statement here, I've said it to a few people here, and I live by this. I live by this. A lot of people try to build a winning program by just straight up winning. Uh, straight up holding the win column as their main factor. But I truly believe that building character in athletes first, the athletes will build your program. Build the character in your athletes first and let the athletes build your program. You cannot build a program. The athletes build your program. So take into consideration that it's about the kid and not about you. Because at the end of the day, you have got to be a leader. You have got to be a coach. You have got to be a parent. You have got to be a boss. You have just got to put these kids in the right direction. And that's where coaching is very important because a coach-athlete relationship is one of the most special, special relationships you'll ever have because it will always be there. And my main goal and one main goal I have in coaching, it's not winning a state title. It's not winning a conference title. It's not finishing first in your conference. My real main goal, and think about this, my real main goal, and it should be for every coach, is that 10 years from now, I run into that point guard that I'm coaching right now, and he's got a better job than me. He's got a beautiful family. He's making way more money than me and has done everything the right way. That's when I know that I am a successful coach. And I hope that you can hold those values the same as I do and those morals the same as I do. And what I would expect is that we take these teachings and these learnings and keep passing them down. Keep passing them down. That's what I'm trying to do in this community. Is everything that I learn, I want to pass it down. That's why I'm passing it down to you. I want you to understand that there's more that we can do. There's more as coaches that we can do than just win that basketball game. And you should take in consideration and feel it right here and teach it from right here that we can do more and we should do more because these are the future of our community. Thank you, and I hope that I've expressed how to be a better basketball coach and mostly overall expressed how we can be better leaders in our community as well. Thank you very much.